Hi guys, today I wanted to do a short uh, video review for a SummerSell D1 digital to analog converter. I think that's the smallest and the cheapest digital to analog converter that the SummerSell is currently offering. And uh, this one is based on something different. This one is using a different digital to analog converter inside. So some time ago, a SMSL released new, not so cheap, digital to analog converter based on new ROM integrated converter. Uh, that is not what this guy is here. Although this one is also based on ROM BD3435EKV. Uh, let's call that in short ROM. Uh, I got this little guy to hear how does uh, ROM sounds like. Uh, it was supposed to break uh, Saber and Asahi Kasei domination, but then it got quiet and I haven't seen a lot of products based on uh, ROM chips. So this guy is uh, like $89, that's without any coupons, this is the base price, and the idea was to get a taste of something new. Uh, it's also, as you can see, very very small and I'm always looking for something small that could give me the best sound quality for my desktop setup over there. You can't see that because mm. the Outlon M10s are blocking the view anyway. So I'm looking for something small because my space, uh, my desktop space is very limited and my current champion is AIMA A80 integrated but I would be happy to find something even smaller. And this guy looked like it could uh, fit the bill, uh, along with some kind of uh, TPA5116, um, small, very small uh, amplifier. So, let's talk some numbers first. The specification says that uh, this uh, guy is capable of signal-to-noise ratio in the range of 119 decibels, so that's quite nice. And the uh, total harmonic distortion plus noise is 0.0038%. And that's quite a nice number. Uh, that's impressive, especially if you take into account that this can be powered by USB. So no fancy linear power supplies, nothing like that. Uh, well, uh, it's also boasting uh, XMOS XCO316 uh, chipset for all. USB uh, communication and that allows it to uh, support everything that you throw at it up to 32 bits and 768 kilohertz and DSD 512. Uh, unfortunately there is no uh, crosstalk data uh, for the channels. Now let's talk about the build on the outside and on the inside. Let's power this guy on? Oh, no. Let's talk about the controls first. Uh, the front panel is made of translucent plastic and it's uh, sporting some kind of uh, small uh, protector. I haven't removed it yet so it looks like it could be a little bit foggy, but uh, underneath uh, it's a clean glassy plexiglass. Uh, we have indicators for coaxial input, uh, for, uh, sorry, not coaxial, uh, but uh, yes, coaxial, uh, but SPDF uh, coaxial input, SPDF optical input, USB input, and for DSD streaming. Uh, we have a logo and we have two touch controls. This one is for powering on and off the device, and this one is for selecting the input. We will see how they work in a second. Uh, we have one set of RCA outputs. Sorry, no XLRs, this guy is little, little, and there is no space for something like that. We have coaxial SPDIF input, and we have optical input here. We have two USB inputs, uh, one is for power only, and the second one is for power and uh, streaming control from the PC or Mac or whatever you want to connect here. Uh, the thing is that uh, it actually can be powered only via uh, USB uh, without this additional connector. And let's do that now. I will connect my power bank here. Yep. And that's it. It started up, I'm remembering my last position. 
uh, I was using uh, USB connection. So in order to switch the input, you need to touch this control. Yep, and it takes a little to do the switching, and it also lights up the DSD in green while doing that. So let's leave it at optical. Oh yeah, and this one is used for powering the device off, and then we can see it's powered off with this red light here and powering it back on. So it's very simple and let's take a look inside. Let's disconnect this guy and give me a second as you can already see uh, I've removed three of the four screws and we need to undo the last one. It's using Torx T4 screwdriver. Yep. No. Get up. Okay, so <clears throat> You can just slide the back and it, uh, if you're doing this for the first time uh, it will stop in something like uh, around something, uh, sorry, it will stop around this position and the reason is that the springs that are working as touch controls, the coils here, are actually touching the self-adhesive areas inside. So, uh, do not be afraid, just pull it slowly away and they will just get free out of these places. So, what can we see here? What can we see? Interesting. Okay, the first thing we will notice is the Exmos chipset here. Yep. We can already see our own chipset here. We can see that uh, there are two USB inputs and the one over here is just for the power uh, and we can see that we have three chips that have been sanded down and these are all probably operational amplifiers so they are either very cheap or they are so expensive that SMSL wants us to be surprised by them and we also have the fourth guy that been sanded down here and I don't know what that is uh, the control point next to it is called mute so I would say that this is something that controls the outputs from the digital to analog converter and I think that's it uh, these are quite interesting I haven't seen uh, something like that for the touch controls but they seem to be working fine and yeah that's it. The solder work looks fine, except for the large spots like those. I don't think that the PCB was cleaned uh, thoroughly, but then again, it works. So let's slide it back in here and let's talk about the sound quality. And I will give you some light show to enjoy while I will be talking about the sound. Yeah. So, as usual, let's start with the bass. And the bass has good extension, but it doesn't go super low. But you won't miss anything unless you have some tracks that dig really low. It's very neutral, which I like, and that's a positive when talking about any kind of digital to analog converter, because any one of them should be highly neutral. Uh, there should be no coloration. Uh, the mid bass is kept in check. It doesn't bleed into the mid range, that's fine. Uh, but the bass is not super detailed and it's not super textured. Uh, it's way better than any kind of uh, PC mainboard output or any kind of uh, console uh, audio output uh, that I've heard. But still, um, as you can imagine, it's not uh, as detailed as uh, from some other larger digital tonal converters because you have to remember that this guy was just $89. Now, mid-range. The mid-range is neutral and again, this is a positive thing. It's neither dry or warm, tonality is just right. There is no sibilance, but the mid-range is slightly lacking that last bit of transparency. Uh, vocals are good with natural timbre and I liked both male and female voices. Uh, that was actually a very nice surprise. 
because I haven't expected uh, such a natural timber for something that was so cheap. But still, I would wish for some more transparency, some more air in the mid-range. Moving on to treble. Treble has no sibilance whatsoever, there is no listening fatigue whatsoever. Uh, I would call it smooth, uh, but it does lack some air and clarity. Uh, all of the explosive are, explosives are here, nothing is obviously missing, so any kind of s will be uh, really fine. But I wanted to see more openness and air in the treble. Let's talk about the detail. Now, here we can hear what limits are coming from the low price. It's still better here compared to any kind of notebook, uh, PC or gaming console, but I really missed a lot of detail compared to any other digital to analog converter that I have reviewed or owned. Granted, this is just $90, so I don't have uh, big expectations here. And uh, also, this may be coming from the fact uh, that it's using uh, USB as a power source, because when I was using uh, the power bank to give additional juice to this device and I was using USB isolator from Neutron, uh, I was able to retrieve some more detail, the resolution was better. But the thing is that uh, power bank, that's money, uh, Neutron isolator, that's like doubling the price, so there's little point in doing that, uh, but if you'll be able to provide a clean uh, USB power supply, or if your device does provide clean power supply, you will get more details this way. So, let's talk about imaging. The imaging is the second thing that takes a hit from low price. Soundstage is wide, it's really wide, but it's not very deep. It's almost flat, with notable ex exceptions on far left and far right. This was actually very interesting, because this is the first digital to analog converter that, to my ears, has a sound stage that resembles uh, figure 8, something like that. So, the further you are on the sides, the deeper the sound stage seems. But if you're moving towards the center, the sound stage gets flatter. The center image is centered, but it's not very precise. Uh, images do not have clear boundaries and definition, and they are a bit more like areas than locations. So, in some, um, in some tracks, uh, the instruments were a little bit overlapping. I wasn't able to pinpoint the location, I was able to point into the general direction of, I don't know, piano and guitar, uh, but then again, they were like, um, the piano would be slowly becoming guitar. Uh, which was fine until you started to look for those places. Again, this was built up to a price point and you can hear it here. On the other hand, uh, in the typical usage scenarios uh, for this little guy, uh, you will probably, probably not even notice that. Now, moving on to the summary. A couple of things to notice first. This digital to analog converter has no volume control. This is pure DAC. Do not use any software volume control, as the resolution will significantly drop. Do use something external, like preamplifier, or maybe integrated amplifier with analog volume control. Uh, maybe some kind of uh, audio video receiver, because this is the this is uh, another usage scenario. If you have older audio video receiver that doesn't have any kind of USB input, but still has uh, quite good quality amplifier inside. This may be a cheap solution to upgrade your uh, AVR or maybe even amplifier with uh, digital inputs. Um, the second thing, using Neutron Isolator significantly improved sound quality, as I've said earlier, bringing more detail, but that was like doubling the investment. Now, I see that the small guy will have its uses, and that will mostly be, be with uh, TV sets, consoles, uh, maybe some space limited um, desktop setups like mine, etc. And in these scenarios, it will do fine. And uh, <clears throat> as for a very small price, you'll be able to improve your TV sound uh, or add digital to a converter to your maybe gaming setup or something like that to your console. 
uh, and make a first step moving away from integrated sound card. So in this regard, $89, that's a good price uh, for something that will be your first device on the road. Now, uh, let's talk about three things I liked and three things I disliked about this device. I liked, I liked the size. I like that it's USB-C powered because that's basically just like one cable to power and use the device with your PC or something like that. Uh, so that's very positive. And I liked the neutral timbre of the sound uh, of this digital to analog converter. Uh, it seems that ROM chip is uh, really flat, but in a positive way, it's very neutral. Uh, now, three things I wish could be better. The first one, a bit more transparency, please. And also, a bit more detail, please. So, these were two of them. And the third one, imaging. Uh, this one is probably me being uh, picky here, as the precise good imaging is uh, one of the most difficult things. Uh, to achieve in audio device, so I honestly maybe shouldn't expect uh, too much uh, from the device that's just $89. Uh, yes, I may be picky here, uh, especially after reviewing uh, most of the clones that I was reviewing uh, um, lately, naming the A75 and Pass LF5 clones. Uh, these were excellent, but these were also amplifiers and they were much, much more expensive. So, if you're looking for something small for your TV or maybe a garage or shop system and you are on a budget, uh, this guy may fit the bill. Other than that, do uh, save for a little longer and maybe get a SMSL D0100 digital to analog converter. Um, yeah, it's like stretching your budget because uh, D0100 uh, would be, I don't know, Three times the price, maybe even more, four times the price, easily, uh, but it's worth it. Uh, this guy, something for your, I don't know, garage, shop setup, that's perfectly fine. But uh, if you want to have a very good sound quality from, from your digital to analog converter, you may invest uh, in SMSL D0100 Pro. Now, thanks for watching, I hope you liked this small video, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, uh, if you have any comments, uh, give me a shout in the comments section. And you're more than welcome to buy me a beer and to subscribe my channel. Thank you and see you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye.